Hello, my name is Legendaries, aka CT Stealth, and I'm here to demonstrate the basic functions of Maya, the basic interface. Um, first of all, these are typically what you're going to see when you create a new scene. These are the four panels. These three, the top, front, and sides, are the orthographic views, whereas this is a 3D navigation world view. Uh, when it's important that when you are creating a model you need to import a reference so you can use view image plane import image when you do this you can place an image and you can find it and place it in your scene uh, if you need to like change it to like so it's not as bright you can go to the channel box which is located here and your image plane, whatever the name is, will be listed. You can click on it and change the alpha gain and just lower that and you'll be able to see through it a little easier. Anyways, these uh, up here, these are the main uh, tool working modes. The This is the, this first button is called the attribute editor. If I select an object, typically the object will have an attributes. Each one of these tabs represents one of the attributes. Uh, the sphere being the object, shape typically deals with like the actual shape itself. Polysphere, uh, each one of these tabs will be varying depending on what you're doing. So it's not really irrelevant for me to go through them all, but uh, polysphere in this case will just be the actual creation of the sphere. If I want it to be bigger or more subdivisions, less subdivisions, make it weirder. Uh, this is the shading networks, adding displacement mapping, normal mapping. Uh, Lambert Shaper, uh, this is the shader that is current, that is on the current object. And there's always a default shader called the Lambert one. Uh, you, if you're ever adding a shader, never edit the Lambert one. Uh, create a new shader, drop it on there by middle mouse click and dragging the shader onto it and so that it's not editing this because this is the default one and it's shared through all models. Uh, you don't really need to know that about right now since it's just the basics, but anyway, this is the toolbox. If I select one of the objects, before I create it, I'll get a set of tools so I can edit the tools before I create the object. So if I'm wanted it to be in a certain direction. So like here, I created a cone. Well now what if I, hey, I wanted it on the x-axis. Then that didn't really work that well. Let me try a different tool. Uh, say how many divisions of my, this is a split polygon tool. Uh, I can, it basically splits the model. I can set the tools, what I want the tools to do here, and then utilize them in here later on. Um, I don't really want to go too much into it because I got other things to talk about. Um, this is the channel box. These are, this is everything you need to know about your shape. Uh, well, not necessarily everything. Everything you need to do that is edited through numbers. Like these here are the primary things for this cone, but in the attribute editor, if I go to the P cone, it's the same attributes here. If you'll notice that this says translate 17, over here it says translate x17. So it's the exact same thing. But these also, if I just click on these, um, these have their own little menu set. So it also records your history too. So if I add like extrudes or stuff, uh, those extrude attributes will be here too, in which I can edit it or delete. Uh, you don't want too much history on your model. You can just go to uh, edit, delete by type history, or delete all by type history. Delete by type deletes history only on the current object, and delete all by type will delete every history in the scene. Leaving history on your models can be bad because when you go to edit something, it's trying to preserve the calculations of the previous history. So if you want to completely remove the history saying, hey, I have this cone here and I don't want it to change ever, 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 unless I want to like uh, edit the top. Then I'm just going to delete the history because if, if I, you know, want to create the model, uh, 
to have the top be edited, then the calculations from the pre me previously editing this cone won't affect my current top. That's that's the primarily basis around that. Um, for navigation, I can select these pan panels here. Uh, it's highlighted with by blue. If I press the space bar, I can come in and out of the panel. Um, primarily, I like to work in this world the most, but for precision, I work in these three. Uh, these right here are different types of menu sets, presets, so if I only want one window, and then I can do that. I can just go hmm, one window. Or if I want two windows. Uh, it doesn't matter what these set are set at. Like this, this is. If you click this, you might see that it says perspective and outliner. I can't really move my cursor, but look right here, and you'll see that it says perspective and outliner. But there's no outliner here. That's because I have my outliner torn off. It's another window. If I close that and I click it, oh, there's my outliner. It doesn't necessarily have to be the outliner. I can select panels and choose any of the other things I want, such as the hypershade menu. So now my hypershade menu will be here, and my panel will be here. So I mainly use these for like, hey, if I want one window or two windows. Sometimes, you know, I have four. A lot of times, I mainly deal with two, to be honest. Uh, four gets kind of annoying, and if I do have to be in this menu, if I need to go to like a top view, then I go to orthographic top. And huh, edit. Okay, now I'll go back to my outliner. All right, there's my outliner. All right, so for navigation, if you press the Alt and left key, left click, you can rotate. Uh, Alt and middle mouse will pan, and Alt and right click will zoom in and out. You can also use the scroll mouse to zoom in and out but uh, it's a little bit irregular. So if you need to move in and out very slowly, you can use the right click, and it's a little bit easier. Um, if you're inside an object, you can it can kind of get a little bit hectic, so the right click is a little bit easier than just scrolling, because sometimes you know it zooms in quick, and sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes it zooms in really slow, too. Sometimes you'll have objects so large that you'll be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and it just you just can't seem to get anywhere so you can use the right click and you can get there faster it's a little bit more controlled um, I'm not going to go into what these are but if you just hold the right click after selecting an object you can get these sub menu sets depending on what they are what the object is will determine what these say for this case it's a it's a polygon sphere. So I'm getting the polygon editing tools, edge, vertex, and face, uh, UVs and vertex faces. Um, so object mode, uh, there's object mode, which is designated by green, and component mode, which is designated by blue. Component mode allows me to edit the vertexes, edges, and faces, whereas the object mode lets me move the object as a whole. Uh, I can press the shift, and right click to get other additional options. I can press control and right click to get even more options and once again they all vary depending on what you're doing. If I hold down the space bar I get all these menu sets. The menu sets you need to be worried about are all in here. If you're dealing with animation you need to be in the animation menu set or polygons. This is the NURBS. This is dynamics such as particles, creating smoke, fire, fluids. Rendering renders out your scene and textures. Uh, you need to, if you're UV mapping your texture, you need to be in the polygon menu set, not the rendering menu set. In cloth just creates cloth. Um, particles uh, is the newer type of poly particles. Uh, dynamics is the old version, and in particles or your sub menu set in dynamics, if you have the newer version of Maya. Um, Will be call will be the newer particles. You can also create your own menu sets here. Um, these menus here just help you are basically just an easier way of utilizing these. So if I want to be in the polygons menu set and need something in the NURBS for whatever reason, then I can just come over here and grab it. Um, that typically helps a lot. 
if if I'm in NURBS because I, I have the curves here and then the polygons I mean the surfaces primitives here and that's just easier to edit the mesh um, I'm gonna create a uh, another movie shortly called um, the difference between NURBS and polygons so I hope you'll stick around for that and I will see you shortly